Good morning. I'm Craig. I'm an aviculture specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo. And today we're actually going to be looking at some of the different species of birds that we have, uh, particularly ones that we uh, focus a lot of breeding with. Um, this area over here we call our avian reproductive center. So we do a lot of our big bird breeding over here. And that's actually one of the things the San Antonio Zoo is most famous for is actually our bird collection because we have almost 200 species of birds here at the zoo. And we have the third largest bird collection in the country. Um, over here, we, like I said, do a lot of our big breeding. Um, and we're gonna focus on some of the species here that we breed and like some of the different programs that we're part of. So in here, we have uh, chestnut breasted Malcoas. They're kind of hard to see because they're hiding in the back there. These guys are little cuckoos. Um, and unlike most cuckoos, these guys actually will build their own nest and raise their own young. Uh, one of the really cool things about these guys here at the zoo is that we're actually the only zoo that currently breeds this species. Uh, this is actually a second pair that we set up. We do have another pair that is um, off grounds for breeding purposes. Uh, so we're real lucky and special to be breeding these guys. These guys are small cuckoo species that are found in like Southeast Asia, particularly Java. Um, so yeah, and like these guys are really cool uh, because they're actually sexually dimorphic based upon their eye color. So both males and females, their bodies look the exact same. But if you look at the eyes, the females have these bright yellow eyes like in this picture here. However, the males have these bright blue, beautiful blue eyes. Um, so they're, they're really cool. Unfortunately, they're hiding out in the back, so they're really hard to see. Uh, and with them, though, we do have what are called northern helmeted curacao. And they're actually the chicks of our breeding pair that we have right next to them. The breeding pair here, um, they laid for the first time last year and we got two chicks out of them. And one cool thing about these birds and the breeding that we do with them is they're actually a critically endangered species. So that's one reason why zoos uh, push really hard for breeding these guys. Uh, one of the really cool things about these guys is they actually do have like a small geographic range down in Central America and into the tip of South America. And as you can see down here, this is actually the parents the one on the left is the male. The males have this dark iridescent black color, while females typically look the same as the males. There's a small like portion of them that will actually have this nice like brown rufous coloration, which is very pretty. And we're hoping to get more females and hopefully they'll have the genes to have that same coloration. And then up here we have hawk-headed parrots. Um, their names are Ernie and Nina. Um, these guys have a pretty cool story. Um, Nina here actually had a mate that she was with for 12 years, and these guys typically mate for life. Unfortunately, her mate passed away. Uh, we managed to find another male for her, and it was just love at first sight. Almost instantly, they bonded, and they're actually currently nesting, and we're trying to get some chicks out of them. Uh, one really cool thing about hawk-headed parrots is uh, their genus. They're actually the only species in the genus Duropitus. Um, and that genus is actually considered like a bridge genus between parrots and falcons. Uh, these guys are also called red fanned parrots. And that is because uh, when they get excited or angry, they actually lift the fan up on their head and it's, you can kind of see the red and blues. Uh, but unfortunately they're not angry right now, so I can't show you that. Uh, we'll just continue on down here. Uh, we do also have a green oropendula in here. Olive. Oh, there she is. She's hiding up top here. Come on down. So these guys are pretty cool birds. They're actually uh, weavers. They weave these big nests, these big, beautiful, like medallion-shaped nests. Um, and she's actually kind of started to do that here. Unfortunately, we aren't breeding this species, so I can't let her fully build her nest. But I let her, I let her attempt and have fun doing it. Um, And then down here, we do have a few different birds in here. None of these birds we actually uh, use for breeding. Uh, here, this big one is a Hadada ibis. They're actually found in Africa. Uh, and then the little black one flying around that's really hard to see, those are black bulbuls. There's another one right up here. Um, again, that's not a species that we're currently breeding. We've bred them in the past, and we may breed them again in the future. But as of right now, we're taking a break from them. And unfortunately, one of the coolest birds we have here at the zoo is hiding in the back. So we'll just point at his picture again here. Um, so this here, it's a Regiana bird of paradise. Uh, if you look at the Papua New Guinea flag, it's actually the bird on that flag. Um, 
they're a bird of paradise. So like what birds, birds of paradise do is they have a really special breeding method called lex. So the males will all be together and they'll sing and they'll dance while the females will select which males they want to breed with. Uh, here at the zoo, we do actually have three species of bird of paradise that we breed, but again, they're behind the scenes. Um, so unfortunately, I can't show you them. Uh, but these guys, they get these like real big, long, pretty plume feathers. They get these specialized feathers that come off the tail called wires. Uh, so they're just beautiful birds. And one of the cool things about them is they're actually really good mimics. So they will talk and say different words that they hear us saying. They'll say or make different like bird calls and stuff. And that's part of their repertoire to try to get a mate. Uh, here at the zoo, like I said, we have the Regianas, we have lesser birds of paradise, and we have red birds of paradise. Um, and yeah, we've successfully gotten eggs out of them this year. Now it's a matter of if those eggs are fertile and if we're going to get any chicks. In here, we have black necked Araceres. Uh, and it looks like they're actually hiding in their box, unfortunately. Uh, these guys are currently nesting. I have not checked the box recently to see if they have any eggs, but we did successfully breed this pair last year. Uh, the black-necked Araceres are found in South America, and they are actually one of the largest species of Araceres. And uh, Araceres are actually just toucans, so they're just a little smaller. Um, they're found in Central South America. Uh, over here, we do have one of our like more important birds. Um, one of some of our more special birds. These are black palm cockatoos. So black palm cockatoos are the largest parrot species found in Australia. Uh, and they have the second largest beak out of any parrot species in the world. The only uh, parrot that beats them is the hyacinth macaw. Uh, so this here is our male. He's coming down. His name's Ricardo. Um, the reason these guys are so special is that we are currently the only zoo that breeds this species of bird. Um, here you go. You want a peanut? guess not but yeah this is Ricardo you can see how big that beak is and these guys have a really strong bite force so it's definitely not somewhere that you want to put your fingers near uh, so these guys like I said they're very special we've gotten six chicks out of them successfully the first five we actually pulled and we hand raised them ourselves uh, but the little one up there that's actually the newest chick uh, her name is Summer uh, and she is actually really important because that is the first chick that the parents have raised on their own. And we are only the second zoo in the country to ever let this species raise their own chicks. Uh, and currently we can't see the female because they do have another egg. And we're hoping that they'll be able to successfully raise another chick. Isn't that right? Yeah, and these guys, you can see how red his cheeks are. These guys will show emotions through those cheeks when they get angry or excited or whatever. It turns real bright red. And it's really pretty, yeah. And then, as you can see, he's using that tongue as like a thumb. And the way that these guys' beaks are shaped, they can't actually fully close their mouths, so that tongue's always just sticking out. And yeah, you can really see him using that. Oh, of course, I point and you stop. There you go. Yeah, these guys, uh, they were here for 19 years before they ever laid a single egg. And like I said, we've gotten six chicks out of them successfully. Uh, we're hoping to get more and continue breeding these guys. And hopefully we'll maybe be able to set up more pairs in the future and breed more of these guys as well. Isn't that right, Ricky? Yeah. And then we'll move on down to here. In here, we do have uh, multiple birds again. This is another one where we're not actually breeding any of these birds, but this does have a female lesser bird of paradise. Uh, as I said, we have three different species of birds of paradise here. Um, and then this does actually have a very special bird, um, and that would be the violet crested taraco. He's actually the only violet crested taraco in the country, and we're lucky enough to have him housed here. Uh, we have been in the looks for a female, but unfortunately they're really hard to find. Um, but yeah, so he's about 24 years old now. He's really energetic most of the time, and he likes to come up and take grapes from you and everything. We'll move on down here. And then over here, we actually have our wreathed hornbills, which for those of you who tuned in last week, you may have seen me talk about these guys, particularly the two chicks here. Uh, and these guys, the one on the left is the little female, and the one on the right is actually the little male that we have. Uh, and as I said last week, these guys were actually here at the zoo for 16 years before they ever even laid a single egg. And we got lucky enough to get two eggs to successfully hatch because we provide these guys with all the resources they need. 
Um, but yeah, now, unlike last week, we can get a real good look at the male here. And you can really see the cast that I explained about and how it's just a small row of wreaths, which is where they get their name. Uh, these guys are also called bar pouched or bar throated hornbills. Uh, because if you look, you can actually see that they have that bar like right along their pouch there. And unfortunately, like I said last week, the female's actually nesting again, so we can't see her. Uh, hopefully, we'll get more chicks out of them this year and continue to breed them. Because like I said, we're only the second zoo to ever breed this, or not ever, but to breed this species in about 20 years. Uh, so it's real exciting that we're potentially getting a second clutch. In here, we have uh, two different species. We have the blue crowned pigeons or great crowned pigeons or common crowned pigeons. Uh, these guys are found in Australia and they are actually the largest species of pigeon in the world. Uh, so these guys are really cool birds, they're really pretty. Um, there is a subspecies of these guys that is actually called like a Victoria crowned pigeon. Uh, and the Victoria crowned pigeons actually just look slightly different from them. And like the difference between them is the Victoria crown pigeon on that crest there or the crown it's actually tipped with like white and real pretty and then the white patches on the wings there are actually more of like a purple color and then that like fuchsia color that runs across the back and the shoulders actually runs all the way across the breast and those guys are found in like more northern Australia and like New Guinea and stuff like that and then here we have my little buddy Igor he uh, he actually has an interesting story he used to be someone's pet, but unfortunately they couldn't take care of him anymore, so they donated him to the zoo where he became an animal ambassador. So he was one of the birds that they would take out and do programs with and let people get up close and personal with. Uh, now he's been retired from that and he lives over here. Uh, we're actually currently in the works of trying to find a female for him to breed. And as you can see, he's real excited about me right now because he is my little buddy. Uh, he really likes people, so he was a really good animal ambassador. Uh, and these guys here, these an ivory-billed Arisari, which is actually one of the smallest species of Arisaris. Um, and they get their name from their bill there, how it has that ivory color and all that. Uh, here you go, buddy. All right, and then over here we have two different African species. We have Kenyan crested guinea fowl down here, which we are currently trying to breed. And we have Lady Ross's Turaco. Uh, the Lady Ross's Turacos are one of my personal favorites. Um, they're just great little birds here. Uh, as you can see, these guys have really vibrant colors. Uh, these, they have these red feathers on the top, and they actually have that same red under their wings, which is one of the really cool things about Turacos, because they're the only uh, like family of birds that actually naturally produce a dye that gives them the red and green colors that they may have. All other birds, they get it from the foods they eat, from uh, beta carotens and carotenoids and stuff like that, kind of like how flamingos uh, are pink from the foods they eat. Um, these guys here are also known as go-away birds because their alarm call actually sounds like they're saying, go away, go away, go away. Unfortunately, I can't get them to do that. I can, however, get them to do what I call their happy call, which is uh, the call they do like when they're bonded and when they're trying to communicate within their like family groups and everything like that. Um, I'll go ahead and demonstrate for you here. I know. I know. So, so I'm able to get I'm able to get these guys to do that because they're really bonded onto me. They've accepted me as part of their flock. Uh, and these guys actually will live in big flocks of like 20 to 30 in the wild. So if you could just imagine 20 to 30 happy birds just going off like that, it'd be pretty exciting to see. Um, but yeah, and these guys, it's another species that we do breed. Uh, these guys are great parents and they've successfully had like almost a dozen chicks throughout the years. Uh, and these guys, they're a species that we'll let them raise their own. Like I said, they're great parents. They'll protect and feed their chicks and all that. Uh, are there any questions about any of the species we've covered yet today? All right, well, with that, I think we are finished. Um, so if you guys would like to help keep our birds happy and singing, if you guys would like to help us with any of the breeding we do or the care that we give all these birds and all the other animals throughout the zoo, please consider donating to the, uh, our emergency fund. 
And with that, I'm going to let you guys off with one more call from these guys. Ready? All right. Thank you, and have a good day.